The other day I ran across a couple of these uh, music box mechanisms. Now these are some older ones. I don't think they build them quite as good these days. Some of them are even electronic. But uh, they're very interesting the more you study them. Uh, this has a, a flat spring in it that winds up that powers the thing. It has a drum with bumps on it that creates the actual song that it's playing. It has what I'm calling a tone bar right here that creates the tone as this drum rotates past it. And then uh, because this is spring loaded, you have to have some sort of mechanism to regulate its speed. So they do that through a series of gears and a little paddle wheel looking thing here that moves through the air and that's what regulates its speed. So as I release the thing, you can see it's playing now, the drum's rotating, but by itself it's not very loud, you can't hear it. But all it takes is just to set it up on something that's hollow like this and, and then you lay this on there and you can hear the difference. So naturally, the first thing I had to do was tear one of these apart and really analyze it. So I thought, wow, it would be really cool if I had one of these like 20 times larger. So that's what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to draw this thing up, scale it up and make these parts 20 times larger. As I began working on this model, I realized I had made a big mistake. It has to do with scaling things up that are affected by the atmosphere. So be sure to watch this video all the way through and see if you can spot what I'm doing wrong. I've spent a good bit of time building this base. Uh, this is the actual piece. And there it is blown up. Here it is for size comparison. I still got some things to do on it. I'm going to put a coat of paint on it and probably sand it and paint it a second time. It's made out of plywood and two by fours. Uh, I've got the bearing mounts for all the gears and stuff in place here. I also have the mount for the, the, the regulator fan, I guess you'll call it. I still have to figure out the spring mechanism that you're gonna wind up to make it work. I'm not too sure about that right now. Also, the tone board will go right back here. The way I'm making the drum is by ripping down two before blocks. These are 16 inch long blocks. I rip them down on my homemade table saw here. It's a little uh, sketchy, but it works. Uh, and it'll take 12 of these that'll go around and make the drum. So here's the way the 12 wooden blocks look. Um, I'm going to glue all the joints and I don't want to use any screws or nails because I don't want to hit them with my wooden lathe. And then I, my plan is to go around it with a ratchet strap and bring it in tight. Okay, well that's got that. It's glued. Now, um, it was a huge challenge, about 20.2 times harder than I thought it would be, trying to get all the edges glued together on both sides. I wanted to make sure they had plenty of glue on them, get them held up into place, and try to get one of these straps on there was a challenge. Uh, but I did, and I did wind up sprigging it in the ends with a little pneumatic air nailer here to kind of make every, to keep everything lined up. Uh, I think there's plenty of glue on it. We'll let it dry for a day or two and then we'll uh, put the end blocks in it and put it on the lathe and see if we can turn it to a round drum like we need. And here's the drum. At this point I have everything glued together. I have the ends glued into it. I have some screws in here that I'll remove just to, they were holding it together while the glue set. Okay, I have it set up on the lathe now. Uh, this is supposed to be a 12 inch lathe, which I guess it is, but that's over the main bar right here. Uh, that doesn't uh, take into account your rest bracket. So I don't have enough room for my rest and my rest bracket on top of this tube right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out some way to turn this thing down roughly. I'll, I'll make a rest of some sort and rough this thing down to a closer size to where my main rest will fit back on there. Okay, I managed to get it uh, turned down reasonably smooth. It's still not right. Uh, even on the slowest speed of the lathe, this thing bounces all over the place, probably because it's way out of balance. Even though it's round, it's still out of balance. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna try to smooth it up a little bit more. And I have a router set up with some guides and I'm just gonna rotate the thing by hand and smooth it up with this router. I've got that router lined up with it and everything, so it should make a pretty smooth drum. All 
I want you to see how I'm going to produce this part here. This is what I'm calling the regulator fan. If you'll notice, there's a very tiny worm gear on the bottom side of that. And then you have the fan blades up here. So what I did is I took a piece of 18 gauge steel and I cut it to the shape. This is supposed to be about 20 times larger than that. I cut two slits in it, one here and one here. And then I placed this thing over a crack in my workbench, a half inch wide crack, and I would beat this down and then flip it over and beat these down until I got it large enough, the hole in there large enough to fit over my 3 8 aluminum shaft. Now this is the worm gear. Uh, obviously the only way I knew to create that was to 3D print it. I drew it up as close as I could and I think I have it pretty good. Now this is all going to slip over an aluminum shaft. Well there it is. I'll glue this worm gear to this shaft. It has to be perfectly balanced because this thing spins pretty fast. So uh, I'm gonna have to do some checking to see how balanced it really is. It looks pretty good though. I mean, it's a little bit crooked right now. I'll straighten that out, but I think that's gonna work. All of these printed parts are going to make this gear right here 20 times larger. Now the teeth on this gear don't look exactly right to me, but I looked at this small gear under a magnifying glass and that's the way the teeth look. So we'll see how it works. This gear is going to be the gear that goes on the end of the drum. And I actually ran out of orange, so I had to switch to purple. As you can see, I had to print this in several pieces. And I also cut away a good bit of each piece because I didn't want to waste all that printer material. So I cut this little uh, groove in them all the way around. And then that's going to fill in with this piece of plywood. I'll glue this into that. And then this will all attach to the end of the drum. What I'm doing now is making this little white piece or the piece that represents the white piece that's going to attach to the drum so here it is but you can get an idea of the size from that to what we have here so i'm just going to attach this to the drum i've got to line up the center hole with the center hole of my drum here um, and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to drill some holes here and screw it right to this What I'm gonna use for the axle for this is a piece of a stair from an above ground pool. I'll cut this thing off, it's gonna become my axle. I have the axle in it now. I had to drive it through there. It was good and tight, which is fine with me. I also had to pin this wood or this drum to the axle because the axle will be powered by a spring to cause it to rotate. But what I have to do now is put my big gear on here I'm gonna wrap this with some aluminum to make it look a little bit better, and then I'm gonna paint it. But right now, let me get the big gear on here. Here's the big gear. I have the plywood glued in place now, and most of the super glue is dried on here, so I think I'm ready to install it onto this drum. I learned something very important when it comes to scaling things up or down. Anything that is influenced by our atmosphere the air around us, for example, is not scalable. If you take a full-size 747 jet and you scale it down to a foot long, it's not going to fly any longer. Even though everything about the jet is much smaller, the atmosphere is not correct for it anymore. Everything is designed for the atmosphere around us. It has something to do with a law called Reynolds Law. And I'm not real sure on that. I'm hoping somebody can explain it more clearly in the comments below. But basically on this little regulating fan right here is I made this 20 times larger than the fan that was on the device I was scaling up. Well, that would mean then that the atmosphere, if I'm thinking correctly, would have to be 20 times less dense for this to operate the same way. So for the time being, I'm going to build the thing without the fan on it. And 
we'll see how it goes from there. I may have to do something to regulate it, but we're going to see how it goes. All right, I want you to see where I am with this. I'm still in the testing phase. I'm going to take all this back apart and paint everything and make it look a little bit more realistic, I guess. Uh, but I did want you to see what I've got going on here. Like I explained a, a few minutes ago is the fan or the regulator fan isn't going to work in this scenario. But uh, I got everything else working. So, so this is the direction the drum rotates. As it rotates, it spins everything else. I wanted to show you my completed tone board. I made this out of two pieces of popular. I had two boards that were like seven and a half inches wide and an inch and a half thick. What I did is I tried to copy the actual little part as much as I could. So on the back side, it looks like this. And the way I did this, I used a slide arm miter saw. And you can see here's a picture of it. And what I'm hoping is that I can cut a hole in the main platform this size and mount this over the platform and the sound will be generated out through this hole here. I'm not super confident this will work. I think that I needed something a little bit harder than the popular that I used, but I'm gonna go ahead and build this thing and try this and see what it does. It does sort of make tones. Who knows, we'll see. So this is the area where I'm gonna mount the tone board. I've cut this area out and my idea is that I hope that any sound created through this tone will be amplified out through the bottom of this plywood box I have here. So anyway, this is going to sit like this. What I'm fixing to do now is I'm going to go ahead and screw this down and then I'll do some little bit of testing with some pegs and see if I can get any sound out of it and what it's going to be like. I still have to build the spring mechanism and the cover for that. I have some ideas how I'm going to make that work. Let's get this mounted first. My second biggest mistake is the fact that on the actual music box, the drum, this part right here is a half inch in diameter or about 1.63 inches in length if you rolled it out flat. That means they're playing their entire song or melody in 1.63 inches of distance. In my case, I have a drum here that is 10 and three quarters inches in diameter or about 33 inches in length. So what that means is, is that Truthfully, if it were to be exactly right, I would be able to play an entire melody like they do in very little rotation of this drum. And in that case, because that would put the nubs so close together, I don't think you could perceive a difference as the tones are being played. Another problem I'm having is this tone board. Being the fact that it's just wood, in this case I think it's popular, the density of the wood is different across the wood. This, this doesn't remain constant across here. So when you have a tone bar, what I'm calling these separate bars here, that is incrementally longer than the bar next to it, you can't be assured that the tone will get lower or decrease by the difference in lengths. Because of the issues that I've discovered as I've been building this thing, it's time for me to pull the plug on this project. It's something that I didn't really analyze as good as I should have before I started, and it's just, it's just gotten out of hand. So I'm not going to spend any more time on this. Uh, I guess I could put some legs on it, put a glass top on it, make maybe a coffee table out of it or something. But I'm going to push this thing to the side. I've got some other things that I want to do. Uh, this will not be the first time that I have spent a lot of time on a project and had to stop when I realized there were issues with it. So anyway, um, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you saw something that you liked or is entertaining to you in some way, I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe and hit that like button. So until we see you again, may God bless you and have a great day.